going to show you how to install the high rate of fire kit produced by Advanced Airsoft. Uh, it's ran by KP out of Honolulu, Hawaii. In it, you're going to get a little business card attached to a piece of paper or attached to a little cellophane thing. Instructions. I've already read through them. I'm going to put them off to the side, though. Uh, a larger diameter airline. The inside diameter is what actually what's larger. So we'll call it a wide bore line for competition's sake. I got two washers and a brass ring. Um, I'm not going to go 100% in order of his instructions as some things I just do a little differently or they seem a little out of place to me. But nonetheless, uh, we'll get you the end result here. So first, I already, up, I already separated the upper sear from the lower. Uh, I'd like to start first by pushing out the, the actual selector lever. So you flip it over, you'll see the little, you'll see the other side, just kind of push. And out she comes really easily. Uh, ensure your rear body pin is pulled. And then just, I like to grab the trigger. So kind of just push upwards and the trigger box, out she comes. I'll put her off to the side. Next, you flip it over. The actual gas, the air passageway, or a little piece you swap out to go from CO2, HPA, puncture valve, blah, blah, whatever, that little piece. You're gonna remove this little Allen screw here on the other side. Depending how often you pull yours out, it may either just come out with a little tug, not mine. So I'm gonna grab this little tool here. Kind of go to the mag, we'll give it a little love tap. Out relatively easy. After that, there you go. Put those off to the side. There you go. That fell out. Put that off. So next, you're gonna remove the spring. Uh, you can stick a finger like mine just kind of came out, or you can stick an Allen wrench inside of it. Just kind of hook it and just sort of pull since mine already came. Get a little pull there. Out she came. I'm gonna put the lower off to the side right now. All right, so that being said, I was running a heavy bolt. Uh, KP does not recommend running the heavy bolt with the high rate of fire kit, so my heavy bolt is out. And before someone asks in the comments or whatever, what is this little piece here? This is my way of killing the, uh, the buffer tube twang that everybody talks about that is pretty much non-existent. So first off, we're gonna have to remove this assembly, or disassemble it, I should say. Start with an Allen wrench. There's an Allen screw up in there. You might need something on the back here. And lefty loosey. I'm kind of putting a little pressure downward on the spring so it doesn't throw any parts going across the room or anything like that. So we'll loosen that. There we go. There's the whole assembly now. This instructions it tells you to put the one of the brass collars on the bottom here. Boom. Put the spring assembly basically back on it. I want to assemble the pieces back together again. That was pretty straightforward. I'm going to try to keep everything inside there. Might give you a little bit of fight now. The spring's got a little more tension on it here. So basically, this collar is just going to preload. Whoop, if you can get it on there. It's basically preloading the spring a little bit. Once you get it threaded, you should be all right. I will probably fast forward to this part. Oh, there we go. Maybe not, we got it. Just make sure you don't cross thread it. There you go. If you need, put something on the back there, a pair of vice grip, pliers, whatever. Get a little tight. All right, I'm gonna put this off to the side now. All right, so next I'm gonna grab the trigger box. Now in his instructions it says, if there is any resistance between the sear here and the trigger box, so as you can see mine maybe, I'm gonna push a little bit. You might be able to see there's a little gap between either side of the sear and the trigger box. If you listen carefully, I don't hear any rubbing or anything. If there is, you're supposed to shave down it so there's no, you need this to be able to kick back as fast as possible. So if it's binding on the side of the trigger box, well, it's obviously gonna slow it down. So first we're gonna disassemble it. In case you have never disassembled this, it's quite easy. There's gonna be two little pins. There's gonna be one right here and one right here. I say they're pins, they're more like little push tabs. I'm just gonna use a busted flathead here. Basically just gonna push the tab in. Once you push it in, it'll gently just sort of pry up a little bit. Don't try to rip the whole box off, that's the other one's not pulled yet. So we're gonna push that one in now. Basically pull up gently as you push that tab in as well. 
There you go. So the box now is separated, but dude, there's some pins over here. It's kind of holding it still, these little guides. So just sort of, sort of walk it off. There you go. Try to hold on to everything. There you go. That went flying. Okay, the sear came off, and luckily the spring stayed right, in, stayed right here. It didn't go very far. I'm going to reassemble it for a second for you, just to show you. But, in the event you're trying to, you take this part you've never taken it apart before, and you're a little eerie because you're scared something's going to go crazy, here's a little shot of what the insides look like. So, with that being said now, I'm going to take this, this sear back off. I'm going to put my spring over here to the side. So, in the event that the sear was rubbing the actual sides of the trigger box, you would simply just take a, a file, a dremel, whatever the case is, and just shave down the thickness of it, the width of it. Give it some strokes, both sides, try to do it evenly. And then you would keep, you would reassemble the trigger box, do a little test and see if it's dragging. Mine's not dragging, so I'm going to let it be. So, what we need to get to here is take this black airline off and we're going to replace it with the blue one that's supplied in the kit. So I'm going to take everything out of the box apart here. Just try to be it as gentle as possible because there's springs in here. So I'm going to push my finger down on this spring over here by the trigger assembly so I can pull it up gently and hopefully not have the spring go across the room or anything. There you go, it didn't. So I'm going to take this, put that over there, and we're left with two pieces inside. If you simply just pull it, Boom. Line will kind of come out. There you go. Now you've got this. Oh no, how do I do this? You get a flathead. This flathead's probably a little overkill, but I'm going to simply just unscrew this piece here. If I can grab it. Try to go from the other side first. Let's unscrew this one. There you go. Now that I unscrewed it, I should be able to do it by hand the rest of the way. All right, so this is where it might be finicky, it might not be. It's just, it's a typical, it's an airline of sorts. I'm gonna hold this and just try to separate and just pull it. <clears throat> there you go, that one came off. Now I can pull this through. So now I've got it on this side here. So it's, it's spinning, so it's, it's loose to me. Now I should be able to get a grip on it. I'm not going to be using it again, so I'm not going to try to purposely destroy it, but I'm going to slip I'm going to need something to have some grip here. So I'm going to grab it with pliers and pull. And as you see, mine's uh, giving me a little bit of a fight. There we go. Got it off. I can't tell if it's a tear, but I don't think it tore it. So there you go. Now all these pieces are apart. Now I've got a blue airline. In the instructions, it's gonna, it says cut to fit. Well, I'm going to try to straighten this out the best that I can. And as I straighten it out the best that I can, I'm going to maybe try to mark it and judge it. And as you see, it's kind of hard maybe to tell exactly where my hands are at, but that's about where it looks like it's to me. I'm going to cut it a little long on purpose for right now. You can always cut more later, but I'm going to cut it right about there for right now. Now I'm going to stick this back on one of the ends here. Might take some, uh, some minor coaxing here. It's even a word. I can't get it in my hand being slippery, so I'm going to grab this again. Grab it as close as I can here. I'm going to push. There you go. She's on. I don't believe it collapsed it. Looks fine to me. Probably go a little bit further, but I'll worry about that in a minute. So now we've got to get it on this side of the fitting here. I'll gently just kind of screw this one back in. I'm not going to tighten it down. I'm just going to give it a light screw. I'm going to do that just so I can figure this out, get this situated to see how, uh, how the one is going to fit. 
So in case you're looking at this again, the way this is going to end up going back in the trigger box, there's a flat on this top of this piece, on the, hybrid, on the actual rate of fire little adjustment. There's a flat piece and there's a round piece. Flat piece is going to go towards the, towards the trigger box. I'm going to lay that in there. I'm going to start rounding the tubing. Also to note, it says in the instructions, some of the, some of the channels here for this, if this blue hose is not fit, take a file simply and widen the channel. As so, just kind of go in the channel. I don't really have to do it as my line seems to fit very nicely. Now that I'm just showing you how to do it, I guess it's not going to hurt me for doing it, but other than that, kind of keep going until the blue always fits nicely in it. So, flat spot, back over. I'm going to gently press the hose. Feed it through the hole here. And there she is. Remember, I left it a little long on purpose to see. If I can get this fitting to be the right direction. So here you can see where it would run into it. Mine's obviously long. That's fine. So with that being said, I'm going to cut. I'm just going to trim away slowly here. There's no point of cutting way too much and then not being able to fit. So I'm going to pull this back out. Let it be kind of loose. And I'm going to see if I can attach this. Again, it might kind of fight you a little bit. My experience right now, if you're on a pair of pliers, don't go crazy and try to cut the cable or cut the hose here, but it also might not hurt if you put a little bit of lube on the end of it, which if I can't get it over, we'll go to that next. Oh, there you go. And I can't get it over there, so I'm going to put a little bit of lube on it. Just a smidgen, you can use whatever you got. I mean, lube is lube. I just use some Get With Some 1000. And then repeat. There you go, went on actually rather much easier that way. So peace of mind might not hurt you to put a little bit of lube on it. So now, let's just uh, cross our fingers that I I know I left it a little long, but let's see if that'll work. Or is that too long still? As you see, it's pushing the Keeps pushing the assembly out, so I'm going to assume we are too long. That being said, I'm going to push the tubing all the way in here now again. And let's see by how much on this side. You can go either or. So, as you see, that's how long I am again. So, Keep basically repeating this until you get it fit. All right, so the blue hose is installed here. As you see, I just had to keep cutting back and forth or whatever. Uh, the little flat spot here on the rate of fire adjustment, make sure that's facing towards inside of the gearbox, the inside, not the outside. Once the blue hose is installed like that, we're just gonna put the gearbox back together. I'm gonna start with the trigger. You should have the one spring here on the outside. I'm just gonna slide right over here. You might have to, there you go, push that spring in just a tad there. Next is going to be the sear. 
Again, don't forget if you had some clearance issues, sand down the sear. Add the sear down there. Just gently push the sear, the spring into its home. And what's nice about this is there's no screws. We're just going to lay this on top. You simply just once it's on top, just push it down. And all of your two pins we had earlier that we showed you, pin there, and the pin there, or the tab, the two tabs, go lock it into place. And the reason for that flat spot on the rate of fire is there is because that way the trigger has some clearance to be pulled. You might be able to do it in semi, but once you get auto, it won't work. All right, we're gonna put that back up the side. Other modification, here's your, here's your selector now. Your detents are gonna be over here, and as you flip it around from safe to semi to auto, you're gonna have these little cutaways here. So the thing with these are, you also wanna free these up as much as possible. So you're gonna take a file, or a Dremel, whatever your tool of choice may be, and you're gonna simply just create some clearance here on both sides. It's not gonna take a ton, but enough that there's, you need everything as free moving as possible here. If you wanna obtain as much rate of fire as this kit's gonna give you, the most potential it can give you, you're gonna need as much smooth moving pieces. So we're basically just opening this up here. So there's no, no fans or butts. So once you're done filing all the sides, if you look at the instructions, it'll show you another picture of what KPs looks like. You can wipe any of the debris off. Basically just going to widen. If you can see here, you're gonna just widen it out basically. You're gonna give it some extra clearance. All right. All right, so I'm gonna grab the lower receiver. Now here's where it came with the shims. I'm gonna start with the max here. I'm just gonna take both of these and dump them right in the buffer tube. Everybody's setup's gonna be a little different. You may require none, you may require one, you may require zero. Uh, before these were going on and before the heavy bolt was using them, we were using stuff like quarters. Um, I personally have my buffer tube screwed all the way to the front. As much as possible, it's flush with the low receiver. But I'm gonna stick both these in here for a test. Just drop them in, spring. There she goes. Now we're gonna pretty much do a reassembly. Trigger box. Just push it in, selector. Just slide her in. You're gonna take your, your little valve here again. It's gonna go like this, in case you don't remember how it goes. You push down into the body, just like that. Grab the Allen screw. Give her a little tightening here. All right. Got my little mock bolt catch came off too. I'll put that back on. Now I put two in there. So the idea we're going to do is we're going to put the upper back on and we're going to see if I can latch it. The idea is to get it basically right before you, can, you can't latch the bolt and take one shim out. So what you're trying to do is push everything as far forward as possible put the upper on the lower now and the idea is to have the bolt as far pushed forward as possible and we're going to basically test we want the bolt 
We want it basically so we can just lock it as much as we can. I'm trying to explain this here. You want to be able to pull this back and so get to the point where you can't pull it back and then basically pull the shim out. So there's two shims in mine. And I, I, I can't physically pull it back. It's, I mean, I can pull it back, but it's, it won't latch. So we're gonna repeat. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take this back out. I'm not gonna explain these steps. You already saw it do it once. No shims. So because of where my buffer tube is at, so now out of curiosity, after you're done with that, the next step is you're going to have to tune it. All right, so to tune it, you're going to have to obviously readjust the rate of fire now. So I left mine, I haven't touched it, it's set where it was to function well on the, just the regular old bolt assembly. Just going to check it out and see where it's at. To be honest, right off the bat, the uh, the trigger assembly and everything actually feels real nice. So, full auto. Uh, to be honest, okay, that was pretty pretty decent right off the bat there. So, if you notice, maybe for a second it kind of sounded like it sped up, ran away, whatnot. I'm gonna pop the upper again. Depending on the model, you're either gonna go clockwise or counter. And I suggest when you adjust the screw here, it is a very small adjustment. The manual, I wanna say says sixteenths. They're 100%, make a small sixteenths. You go crazy and you, you're, you're gone here. So I'm gonna do just one click clockwise on mine. Gotta be gentle. There you go. Go one more to the, one more movement clockwise. All right, so basically you're gonna keep repeating your process until you get it as fast and smooth as you want. Uh, right here, I'll show you all three of them back to back, and uh, other than that, that's how you install it. Hopefully the demonstration here was uh, easy to understand. If not, I guess PME, PMKP. Uh, Any questions, comments, concerns, throw in the comments below. Have a good one, guys.